one, two, three. Hi everybody, this is Crypto Rich, working with you to get rich with crypto, filling our pockets with crypto profits. I have with me Kay Kamani, but that's not the man you're looking at. I also have with me Kay Van Devani, and the two of them aren't twins or brothers, even though their names rhyme. And what we're going to be doing <laughs> is have a quick look at the Bitcoin price and the ETH price, and maybe a little bit about Spectre. This is, uh, you know, when Kay comes on once a month to uh, give his insight and perspective on what's happening in the cryptocurrency space. I want to let people know this is not investment advice to your own due diligence. Do not, do not, do not, do not invest any more than you can afford to lose. And all I'm doing in this video and all the other videos that I'm doing is sharing with you what I'm learning as I discover, as I travel along on the blockchain. And Kay has very kindly made himself available. He's on his way to the airport before he flies off somewhere nice and warm. So uh, <laughs> let me go, let me go. Let me, and he's on the telephone, uh, which is why he's not on camera because otherwise I know we'd see him because he always shows his face. Uh, Kay, very quickly, actually, Kay, I'm going to introduce you for the purpose of brevity. Kay is the CEO of Spectre. Uh, Spectre ICO'd last year, the world's first regulated and brokerless financial trading platform. More about Spectre later on. It's fabulous. Uh, the tokens are SXDT and SXUT. And Kay Van Devani, Kay Van runs his own YouTube channel, The Total Connector. I'll have a link to that in the description below. And Kay Van, do you want to say a little bit about your background? Yeah, just in short, thank you so much for having me on. My name is Kevin Davani. I see myself as an educator, investor, and a legal expert when it comes to Bitcoin and the total, you know, uh, central banking fiat uh, structures. Great. Okay, very good. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, thank you to Ken. Thank you to Kevin. And Ke here we are with the Bitcoin chart on uh, Bitfinex. All right, Kay, give us your magic. Yeah, um, so on Bit, obviously on Bitcoin, um, we've broken a very significant support level, uh, which was the 5K barrier. And then after that kind of all hell broke loose, you know, it, it quickly broke through the four handle as well. And I think uh, bottomed out at 3.7 or something like that. Yes. Um, the Bitcoin ETFs, you know, as expected, they weren't going to be approved this year anyway. Uh, certainly with the state of things in the U.S. right now with regards to SEC cracking down on more unregulated ICOs, etc. Um, and also, you know, there's a lot of um, overbought levels from a fundamental standpoint in the S&P across equities, across bonds. I mean, it's not investment advice, but it's just a fact mm -hmm. that, you know, it's been many years of uh, asset price appreciation in the traditional markets. And there's a, there's a lot of uncertainty. And if you take these factors together, and of course the whole saga that's going on between Bitcoin Cash, um, the fake uh, Satoshi or whatever his name is, uh, Craig something, and, and then you have all these other things. Yeah. You effectively have um, a, a perfect storm which is driving these, uh, these assets lower now. Bitcoin, in my personal opinion, is... Uh, has has fallen far too quickly, far too much as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the the bears would argue that it's rose also far too quickly and far too much. So, um, from a personal standpoint, you know, if one has a long term view, then I think um, these levels, while there is further room to drop, because you know the under underlying factors um, haven't changed much, mm -hmm. um, I think it's it is very overdone. Right again, not investment advice. Um, and the most important fact about Bitcoin is that you know it, it still has a very prevalent and strong use case uh, in the decentralized industry. Right, people use it as a store of value. They use it for payments uh, at an increasing rate. So, uh, and that's what it's always been there for. Right. So ultimately, I don't see um, um, a big reason for these bears prophecies to come through some people are saying it will go to 200 some are saying 1000 i'm just not seeing it and you have some, yeah and you have some big players coming in you know fidelity uh, has announced recently they're coming in in a big way uh some of the bigger trading desks of some of the more prominent investment banks um have started dealing in it so these are all good signs um it's not a timbuktu sort of tulip level asset class uh, sorry asset 
uh, Bitcoin. So personally, I still like Bitcoin a lot. Um, I think Ethereum uh, is a bit of a victim of its own uh, algos, so to put it. I mean, it's because of its smart contract capability. You had a suite of ICOs last year. Uh, many are failing now. And um, investors are realizing that. So they're exiting Ethereum. And that perpetuates the uh, self-fulfilling cycle in the sense that mm -hmm. the, IC, the, the ICOs that hold a lot of Ethereum, we're not one of them, by the way, but th they see the Ethereum price falling, they see their runways being crushed, so they need to sell. Mm -hmm. um, oh. And so, w so we're obviously, I mean, where Ethereum now is, is it's at a critical juncture, it's the 100, the psychological level very key psychological level. I think, again, it should have bounced. You know, we had said that there would be a technical bounce. Now. Sorry? $114. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From a chart technical standpoint, it's already ripe for a bounce. It, sh it should have bounced somewhere around 200. So this additional push down, the last 100 or so, which happened in the last two or three weeks, uh, this is capitulation. You know, a lot of ICOs have shed a lot of their Ethereum in the last two or three weeks because they need to salvage their budget, their, mm -hmm. their runway. Um, okay. <clears throat> Sorry so, about that. I, yeah, go ahead. Can I, can I ask, uh, okay, if we go just for instance, uh, beyond the symptoms, uh, I remember last year when you said uh, there's, you know, always a multitude of factors, you know, especially, you know, one of the very minor uh, factor would be Christmas. You know, people want to go on holidays, uh, whatever, and then we got uh, you know people need money. Yeah. So on the other hand, the SEC has has started their. I mean, I don't, I don't want to call it witch hunt. I think it's overdue that the SEC has taken action. Now, do you see the SEC, you know, going further and accelerating this chain reaction of selling off the baskets of of whatever investors, founders, CEOs, which have a basket of whatever uh, Ethereum, Bitcoin. And it would sort of the psychological, uh, whatever you call it, the call it support point, would then even drop further. Um, I don't think the SEC is going to be the trigger for that, to be honest. Um, I actually think it's going to be the lack of deliverance by ICOs, which will cause investors to leave the sector completely. And whether that means them holding Bitcoin, they just dump those Bitcoins, or the Ethereum that they hold and they leave. I think that is what in theory would bring Ethereum down below 100. Um, you know, we have discussed a scenario where Ethereum hits 50 and even $10. Uh, I don't think it will hit that anytime soon because it is very, very oversold from a chart technical standpoint. A bounce, you know, I certainly wouldn't short Ethereum here unless I have a structural view that three, four years from now uh, the project will be dead or superseded by a better coin, by a better smart contract chain. Um, I don't think the SEC is going to be able to bring this down further. I think uh, it is now it is literally all about the token sale projects that raised a lot of money last year to actually deliver their roadmap. And what we're seeing is there's bifurcation. There are some projects which are doing good. I think that's maybe five out of 100 projects. There is probably 20 to 30, which are outright scams. And then you have this uh, thick distribution in the middle of projects which are either lying to investors about their progress because they have all this money so they can keep investing in marketing and keep uh, delaying the inevitable. And then you have obvious scams where you have projects being uh, ordered by the regulators to return capital back to the token. So you have a lot of wind downs, liquidations happening as well. All of this is hurting Ethereum. Um, and because none of the technical upgrades in Ethereum happen until two years from now, roughly, one or two years, and because it's going to take time for the good projects to really deliver big numbers, you're going to have this vacuum, this vacuum, which will probably be also 2019, where Ethereum just treads water around current levels, maybe even ventures lower, right, to 50 30, but it's, 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 very, it's going to take so much strength to get Ethereum back up, right? Unless 
there's a new case, new use case for Ethereum, and that would be STOs, security token offerings, but actually well-executed STOs by regulated book runners, underwriters, and a proper exchange or two which are regulated that does KYC, that doesn't accept Americans, uh, that basically trade these, these new category of tokens, which pay actual dividends after KYC of existing companies that have been around for five to 10 years that need access to growth capital, but non-dilutive funding, which is what ICO money is. Once we get, if someone is brave enough to launch a series of these STOs, then in my opinion, again, this is not investment advice, this will be a new case for Ethereum, and there are over 200, I think 180 million registered SMEs in the world, uh, of which a significant portion is has more traction than 99% of ICOs today, who could see the ICO space as a legitimate form of funding uh, and return of capital to, to token holders. And this is uh, to equity holders, actually, because an STO means that you're tokenizing the equity. So this, in my view, could get Ethereum back to its all-time highs. And it can happen very quickly, but someone needs to have, this needs to be a fundamental driven change. Right. The current ICOs are just not going to deliver that. 99% of them are, are headed to, to failure. The teams are uh, not smart enough, they're not experienced enough, and their runways have been crushed. Uh, so this will continue to depress Ethereum um, until its upgrades come through. So okay. it's two things, just to summarize. Yeah. STOs properly done, and I do say properly because I don't think a lot of the people that are applying them right now actually understand them and the, the, gravi the gravity of, of the, the instrument and how big it can be. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, Ethereum itself obviously becoming much more scalable as soon as possible so that companies like ours can actually build real solutions on the chain. Right now, we are largely uh, centralized, although we have decentralized broking our element. But for example, Betverse, which we're launching soon, is purely centralized because decentralization just doesn't work from an economical standpoint. It's too expensive at this moment for smart contract-based chains. For something like Bitcoin, I think it's an excellent application of technology, decentralization, but not for smart contracts. So, okay. It's a race between the two. Yeah. Sorry, forgive me, forgive me for interrupting you. I just want to go back a little bit to Bitcoin, right? Thank you for the ETH analysis, yeah. right? And then I want to say something about there's one particular project which has held its price really well the last few yeah. weeks or so. And I just want to mention that it's an ERC20 token. Um, and yeah. I think you know a little bit about it. But just okay. so, so what I'm getting from what you're saying is you reckon, not investment advice, not in just your opinion, yeah that um, Bitcoin's pretty much bottomed out. And then where do you see it go in the next few months, next few year, well, not, over the next year or so, or the next few months or so? I, I believe, look, Bitcoin largely is bottomed up, but however, you know, you can't predict the future completely with perfect mm -hmm. accuracy. For example, um, Ethereum, I had said that there, would, there should have been a technical bounce around a month ago to the three, 400 levels that didn't happen. So I was wrong there, and it's actually come down to 117. But yeah. until there, we were accurate. So same with Bitcoin. I can't say that we won't go lower, but I don't see Bitcoin in a, at 1,000 or 2,000. It just doesn't, doesn't seem to add up. What's happening now is capacity is coming out of the market in terms of miners. Bitmain has slashed their mining prices, uh, and now the economic reality is starting to set in. The project economics, the internal rate of return for miners has changed. These are the right things that need to happen. That same thing happened with oil and the oil capex when oil plummeted to 50 a few years ago. So we need that happening here and those are good signs. Right. So longer term, if you take a one to two, three year view, there's a Bitcoin is the unhacked, the most trusted currency in the decentralized space. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, after what you've seen between the war that's happening between Roger Ver and his, uh, the Craigslist guy, I forget his name. Craig Wright. Um, Craig, sorry, Craig Wright. The, these two, I mean, they, you've seen what's happened to Bitcoin Cash. It has been a horrendous investment. Although maybe Roger Ver was, is right about its fundamental, the execution has been horrible in the media. And that's what, you know, if you look at the price, it's not something investors from outside can come in and, um, 
and draw any certitude. They can't say, okay, this is the same place. Bitcoin, on the other hand, yes, it's fallen a lot, um, but it still has heavy volumes. It has a lot of transactions going through every second around the world, increasing. And let's be honest, people use it to pay each other. They just do, yes. right? So in the next, and, and the cohort, the cohort that uses Bitcoin is age 20 on average, 25, 20. 40 year olds, 50 year olds don't use it. Now, as we progress over time, um, the young people that are much more tuned and open to cryptocurrency will of course be using Bitcoin more and more. So if you take a three year view, I can't say one year, but if you take a three to five review, ETFs will get approved. Institutional money will come in at a grander scale, right? And we're speaking to family offices as we speak. So we, we hear what they're saying. Mm. Once this money comes in, it is but natural that Bitcoin, uh, which is currently the, you know, at the pole position, technologically, perhaps not, but in terms of adoption, it will rise. It has to go up. Um, the question is how quickly and when. Um, I don't, I've always said this. I'm not a believer of Bitcoin at a million or a hundred thousand. I completely disagree with John McAfee and these guys. Mm -hmm. But It can challenge its all all time high again in the next three years. That's possible. Um, basically, all the shit needs to be segregated out of the landscape. Regulation needs to continue. ETFs need to come in so institutional capital can come in, and the trust will be rebuilt. This is what happens with, in all boom and bust cycles. Again, I have to say, Bitcoin has survived very very harsh drops over the last decade many times many times and each time it happened people said it's game over so i think it'll take time i can't give you a prognosis of okay. what the price will be like okay sorry forgive me for interrupting you because i know i don't want you to miss your plane um and i do okay. want to talk about this other erc20 token which has really held its price very very well and it goes by the symbol right. dt <laughs> <laughs> Because I've been watching it, it dipped to about eight cents in the in the dog days of the summer. Um, yeah. Just looking, but it's got, you know, it's 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 been up as high as thirty five cents, and lately, you know, it drops a little, but then it just bounces back up, and it's about twenty. What is it now? It's twenty. Uh, wow. Twenty twenty five cents. Yeah, but you got to look at it yeah. on on Fork Delta or some. I mean, uh, you know, you, I, I'm not sure it's the actual numbers, so. Sure, I'm using coin market cap because that's just easiest right now. So what I had set up. Anything okay. you want to say about about Spectre? You are the, as the CEO of Spectre. Well, with Spectre, the thing is that look, um, we launched around seven months ago, and our weekly rewards, which are paid to KYC token holders, um, they have been increasing on a dollar basis as well. Not every week, but we are hoping and obviously trying for monthly growth and. It's because we're actually returning uh, uh, traction related dollars back to token holders. Uh, that's why the token has outperformed the market on an absolute and relative basis as well, right? The token sale price was 11 to 15 cents. So this token is above ICO in a market which is down 80%. Uh, and this is called yield support. You won't find it only with us. You probably see this with other companies as well that have that returned actual capital back to token holders. So in down times, the market tends to gravitate towards these lower beta assets like ours. Mm -hmm. So um, that's been the main reason, right? I mean, it's not our story. story. We've never, yeah, and we never shill our token. We don't market our token. It's against oh. our strategy. We just grow our platform. Uh, soon we're launching Betverse, which is um, a very significant development, uh, technical development and also marketing development. It, allows us to enter the gaming industry. Uh, the launch is going to be a surprise launch. There is no date uh, mm -hmm. because we were very careful about, you know, insider information and all these things. So, um, so that will diversify us more. I mean, if you look at our diversification, we have a very little link to crypto at this moment. What has hurt us this year is the fact that we have to force uh, smart options traders to deposit Ethereum. And Ethereum has only gone in one direction. Yeah. So that hurts us uh, cosmetically, optic from the optics standpoint as well. If you type in Ethereum, the first thing that comes up, you know, is scam and all this stuff, although it's not a scam. 
So these things have hurt us, but we have taken a lot of measures to to build in fiat integrations. And then with Betverse, which is fully fiat, uh, yes, you can deposit in Bitcoin and Ethereum after KYC, but it is a fiat-based system. Um, our we will be almost entirely depegged. I mean, we will have no uh, correlation to what happens in the crypto markets, and that's really important at this stage. Um, you know, unlike certain token sale projects, which I won't name who basically their whole mandate is to invest their investors' money in crypto projects. I would not want to be running one of those because that's mm -hmm. a really, really ugly picture that's developing. So I think that's all that, has, you know, that I can say on SXDT. As for SXUT, which is our utility token, uh, that is down from the original price. But again, the, vol the volumes are so low. Mm -hmm. um, the most important thing is fundamentally, more and more traders are using it on the platform to upgrade privileges. That's really important because that's actual sign of traction. And of course, we'll be unlocking that on Betverse as well after launch shortly. So um, yeah, things are all right. I mean, things are definitely all right, but we dodged a big bullet by hedging earlier this year. So yes. Okay, listen, thank you so much. It's 8.31 on a Saturday morning. You gotta go and catch your flight. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Kay. Yeah. And uh, thank you, Kayvon, thank you. Look forward to speaking to you soon. And just so everybody knows, it's actually written in the Spectre smart contract that Kay returns onto this channel on a regular basis. So if you have <laughs> any comments or questions, please put them in the description below. Uh, Kay Van and I are going to continue talking, and Kay is going to go fly. Have a good Thank flight. You guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Have a great one. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. And bye. for those of you not familiar with Spectre, so I, I invested during the ICO. I have Spectre. I think the reward pool in April was about two ETH. So a total of two ETH was shared out to all the SXDT token holders. It's shared out on a weekly basis at Sunday noon UK time. And uh, it has slowly gone up, gone up, gone up. A few weeks ago, the reward pool was 40 ETH. Not 40 ETH per token, but 40 ETH between all the token holders. And this Sunday gone, the reward pool has gone up to 70 ETH. Yeah. Not finished, you know, Com complete development of everything, right? So there's bet first to come and then there's going to be other applications built on the Spectre platform that are going to provide uh, income for SXDT holders. So it's a long-term play. Okay, then, you and me now. Anything, yeah. well, anything you want to say, any comments you want to make? No, let me let me just, you know, add a compliment what you just said. Um, let's just go, you know, let's just stick to Spectre. Um, you know, my values and my... Uh, let's just call it values are because when you know, when it comes to due diligence, you need to do a lot of uh, research. You need to question a lot of things. You need to go and dig inside the team, the background, are they solid, have the track record of experience. So these are things I think most of us or most people, as I used to like two years ago, I had no clue where to begin. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Spectre is one of the very, I mean, if at all, one of the very few handful projects that has literally delivered numbers, data, functional products, return investment, whatever that marginal minimal, uh, you know, uh, output there what it was, you know, in form of uh, rewards or rewards, as we say in Spectrovis language. <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, it's all about, you know, transparency, credibility, uh, trust, and, you know, solid experience. And you got, you got this whole package in Spectre. And, and to be honest, I, I, I think a lot of us, even the ones who, uh, people I know who, who are really deep into crypto, they said they, they actually underrated uh, Spectre. And it's always good, you know, that's what I love about, about Kay and his team. They make under promises and they over deliver. And that's how it should be. Yes. You know? Absolutely, absolutely. And Spectre is so not known. So under the radar and so not known. Now, if people do want to uh, buy some SXDT or SXUT, you know, uh, I'll have a link in the description below. Read up on the white paper. Do your, do your due diligence. Check it out. If you want to get it, you can get it off Fork Delta. I think there may be one or two other exchanges, but you have to have com complete KYC in order to get the, the rewards on a weekly basis. And it's not available to U.S. investors, U.S. token holders. All right. All right. Hey, but anything you want to say about, uh, about the prices of Bitcoin and ETH or the market? Any comments in general? Let me just uh, put this on, if I may. Um, you see this? 
I mean, this, this by itself is a statement. That's $2 trillion of worth of Bitcoin was traded in 2018. You know? And then on top of that, if you have, um, you know, institutions uh, such as, I think, was it BACT? BACT? B-A-K-K-T? Yep. Who said uh, something like, um, you know, it's the most, first of all, Bitcoin makes up the, you know, half of the crypto market capitalization. It's the most liquid, uh, liquidity, you know, they emphasize liquidity. So, and then on top of that, I mean, I'm not an expert on derivatives and all this and futures, but this is what's coming. And I think this is maybe what, uh, uh, if, if Kay had a little bit more time, maybe next time he can go into detail, what, what does this do? And I wanted also to ask him maybe next time about this Swiss, uh, it's not called ETF, but something like that, like EPT or something. What kind of effect would that have in the short term, midterm, or long term on the Bitcoin, you know, price fluctuations or price movement, you know, and how how far can it go down in order to bounce back exponentially higher? You know, right. I I don't I don't um, you know I would agree also with K. It would, yeah, I mean maybe maybe I'm not you know that's the problem. I don't know what's going to happen in 10, 15 years. You know, where is Bitcoin going to be in 10, 15 years? Is it going to suck up all the fiat equities? I mean, we're talking about all kinds of institutions sitting on, you know, on dozens and hundreds of trillions of dollars. So by that time, what's going to happen to the fiat value system? And is it going to be sucked in into the Bitcoin as a hardest, hardest money and store of value, totally new monetary economical system. This is, this is what actually, you gotta, you gotta look at it. This is what people don't understand. Don't look at the price, look at the fundamentals. Yeah. 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 And the fundamentals are solid. Absolutely. Absolutely solid. Okay. Anything else you want to say about ETH or any of the market in general? Or about no, the but no, the last thing I wanted to say is that uh, the SEC, I still think it's an important factor in this whole process because if, if they are imposing penalties uh, on, on those, uh, you know, ICO scam, fraudulent, or whatever, incompetent ICOs or non-registered securities, I do think personally it will accelerate the, the sell-off and the, the pressure downwards on on simultaneously on ETH and Bitcoin. But that's my personal opinion because it has sort of inter, intermingled con, interconnectedness, mm -hmm. you know? So um, I'm not sure, you know, I mean, they could set an example, a public one. That The, word, the reason they don't do it public is because uh, once the court uh, ruling comes out, then they're bind, they're somehow bound to that court ruling and then they can't you know maneuver around it so that's why they're doing sort of a they're taking like the easiest cases and setting there an example right so i think it's worth a discussion just about the, the whole sec regulation and what it does to other you know the effect on other jurisdictions that's that's what there's a very you know a very um uh pretty cool article that just came out just uh, just uh, uh, for the sake of it uh let me the um the it's called guidance by enforcement and one of the one of the best lawyers uh his his name is uh uh jake jervinsky yeah really awesome article you should read it about the sec uh momentum or a temporary analysis one of the best analysis i've seen so far just to see you have an insight what's going on in the background you know with the sec and all the other non whatever security registered tokens and ICOs and what the future could look like for, you know, in general, for legal framework for, for ICOs. Yeah, that's about it. Thank you so much. I'll link to that in the description below. Thank you so much. Uh, any, any, any last words before we finish up? No, let's just hope, you know, just look at it long term. You know, I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm saying, you know, I'm always saying you cannot build a house if you don't have the real solid foundation. And that is for me, Bitcoin. That's, and, and I'm amazed and baffled that how many people in the blockchain crypto space still haven't understood or comprehended the fundamental power, the source, the essence of Bitcoin and why we take the inefficiency, the slowliness 
uh, the difficulty adjustment, all this, we take this for granted once you understand Bitcoin. But mo a lot of people don't understand it. That's why I'm so amazed. And I've been here in this space and I'm, I don't have a technical background. Mm -hmm. I had to learn, you know, that. And, and uh, once that, you know, is, uh, is rooted into the system, the old structures just become obsolete. I mean, why, what do you need a centralized, centrally banking, you know, uh, res factional reserve banking fiat currency system, which is totally inflationary and totally destructive for the total economical system. So once we have that, a totally, you know, hardest money store of value beyond gold, because it's totally, totally and absolutely limited with 21 million, you can already say by now, when is the last token going to be mined? And that is in the year 2140. Yeah. The difficulty adjustment. And we are right now at what? 18 million mined Bitcoins, I think in total. Mm -hmm. And the next 1 million, so up to 20 million Bitcoins is going to be mined by approximately year 2025, 2030. And just imagine that the rest of it, the, the, so the last 1 million that's going to be coin, uh, mined is going to be slower and slower and more and more difficult. And more and more, more yeah. valuable. We got the hardening uh, coming up in a couple of years time. And uh, the other thing that you said that you said that that I wanted to build, you didn't say it, but we are just at the beginning. We are just at the beginning. So for anybody who's watching, I mean, certainly I, 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 I hodl. I'm going to continue hodling. I'm hodling through the bear market because fortunes are made in a bear market. You buy low and you sell high. Don't sell low and then buy when it's high. Kayvan, thank you so much. If you have any comments or questions for Kayvan or Kay or myself, please put them in the description below. Uh, and subscribe, hit the notification bell. I look forward to seeing you all in the next, well, I post pretty much every day. Some very exciting stuff coming up, but then I will say that. Between now and when I see you next, please keep filling your pockets with crypto profits. This is Crypto Rich and Crypto Kayvan and Crypto K signing out. All the best. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye.